Okay, um, I would like to thank the uh, TBRS community for uh, giving me this opportunity to share our research work. And today, I would like to um, di discuss our recent finding on a novel neural circuit for emotional eating. Although this research is not closely related to uh, the TBRS syndrome, um, but uh, I think um, the neural circuit for uh, feeding or uh, body weight regulation are shared um, at the uh, neuronal level. And I hope that our research will provide some insights on the neural uh, regulation of feeding related to uh, body weight and also um, uh, can allow you to appreciate how the brain and the neuronal circuit function uh, specifically in feeding behavior. So the reason we are interested in feeding behavior is that uh, currently, as we know, that the obesity epidemic is, uh, has reached a uh, 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 epidemic level. And you can see that um, more than one third of American population can be categorized as obesity. And obesity is a problem not only by itself, it's also contributed to an array of other um, disease uh, as listed here. Um, based on these uh, dire um, consequences, uh, we need to understand how uh, feeding is re regulated uh, because the feeding um, or higher level feeding is a major contributor of uh, body weight regulation or obesity development. Uh, talk about feeding, let's uh, review how feeding behavior is involved. As you can imagine, our ancestors, uh, when uh, they, uh, in ancient time, they spend most of the time uh, hunting for food, uh, spend a lot of uh, activity. And cur currently, you can see that we can drive to any uh, fast food restaurant, can get food readily. Uh, but the price we paid is that massive obesity. And similarly, we also can see in the rodent. And here I show um, a, a mouse that spend most of the time in wide field searching for food. However, uh, if we um, have these mice in a um, lab and feed them a high fat diet, and they also develop this high fat diet induced obesity. And based on this shared um, phenomenon of obesity development, and also other um, uh, uh, mech mechanism, we think that we can use animal model to study feeding behavior related to obesity development. And research from last decades have suggested that um, the overall uh, body weight uh, homeostasis is regulated by a feedback loop. Here I use uh, leptin as an example um, to show uh, how this feedback loop works. A leptin, uh, the concentration uh, in the blood is uh, proportional to the adipose tissue mass, which is indicator of obesity development. And uh, an increased leptin concentration can be sensed by the brain, especially a brain region called hypothalamus that can in turn regulate food feeding behavior and energy expenditure uh, to achieve uh, body weight homeostasis. And if you zoom in this hypothalamic structure, which actually is a tiny structure located in uh, the base of uh, a middle brain underneath the thalamus called hypothalamus. And this is the structure of different uh, nucleus, which is neuronal clusters located in the hypothalamus. And today we will draw your attention to two major brain structure, one called lateral hypothalamus, uh, LH, the other called paraventricular hypothalamus called PVH. Uh, both of them have been shown to be critical for body weight regulation. And on the other hand, we know that feeding is a complex behavior. Um, in the homeostatic point of view, feeding is a circle, right? So if you feel hunger, you'll drive feeding behavior. Once you feed enough food, you feel society, uh, satiety. And this circle uh, drive uh, uh, around. But this is not, this is a homeostatic feeding and it can be influenced heavily by higher brain function, including uh, fear, stress, emotion, and pleasure. And as you can imagine in um, ancient time, when we um, looking for food, um, we, are, we, we were um, 
afraid by hunt by some other uh, creatures. And also you can imagine the fear or emotion associated with the little guy. Uh, he facing, facing this uh, delicious food while uh, facing this danger. So the decision to making uh, whether to eat is critical for uh, their uh, survival. Uh, however, uh, currently the neural pathway to link feeding at this emotional behavior is still unclear. But this is, can be very important. Here I just show um, uh, uh, the two um, extreme condition uh, uh, from a healthy eating with, with a normal body weight. Uh, if you have a higher level of uh, hedonic feeding or reward feeding, that will lead to uh, hyperphagia and obesity. Um, but on the, on the other side, if you refuse to eat and even you have uh, face hunger, uh, you still refuse to uh, eat eating and you will lead to anorexia. And currently the clinical data show that there's a higher, very high uh, level of association between eating disorders and a pathological anxiety. And in a clinically, um, the anxiety related disorders we treat with BDZ drug and the major side effect is obesity. Uh, so these data suggest that the neural pathway uh, that link feeding with emotional behaviors may be more important for human obesity development, um, especially with eating uh, disorders. However, brain, as we understand, is a very complex structure. In our human brain, we have about 100 billion neurons. And on top of that, um, uh, between neurons, there's a lot of uh, connections. And one key feature of neuronal connection is called um, a synapse, which is a structure that connects two neurons. And the neuron, the, the another feature of neuron is that its activity can be changed um, up and down. Activation indicated by higher action potential can cause more release of a neurotransmitter from a presynaptic terminal, which can affect postsynaptic neurons. So this is the major way for neuronal communication inside the brain, and. Uh, Two of the major neurotransmitter, uh, which we will discuss about, is called glutamate, uh, which is an excitatory uh, neurotransmitter, cause um, the excitation of uh, postsynaptic neurons. And the other one is GABA, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, and it causes inhibition of postsynaptic neurons. And because the brain structure is so com complicated, we need a way uh, to address it to reduce this complexity to a, a, a group of neuron level. So we use a Cree-Lux-D-based optogenetics. And I wouldn't go to in detail about this technology, but I want to make uh, you realize that the approach we use, we rely on a channel adoption two, which is a light sensitive ion channel from algae. And we can express it specifically in a subset of brain neurons then we can use light to control their activity. Uh, for example, we can express this channel adoption only in neuron A, then we can use light uh, to uh, activate this neuron at cell body level, and also we can activate it at a terminal level. We can specifically activate a terminal in different brain sites where this neuron project to, so that we can activate individual um, pathway um, that underline this neural function. So this is the best approach we're using for uh, this study. So now come back to the brain structure we're, we're gonna discuss called LH and PVH. So LH is here, PVH is here. And um, we can see that uh, this uh, positive structure we call LH neurons. And we can see these neurons send a lot of fibers to the, the PVH. So this is the fibers coming from LH. So from this picture, we can say that this LH neuron sent um, abundant fibers to PVH. So there's a strong neuronal connection between these two brain structure. And we know that in the LH, there are two group of neurons. One uh, release uh, a GABA, the other one release glutamate, and both of them can project to PVH neuron. PVH neuron also called c neuron. So first, um, we want to um, look at GABA neuron function. 
In this case, we want to express channel robson selectively in GABA neuron um, um, in the LH. And you can see we, we express channel robson in LH GABA neurons right here. And then we, um, we see the fibers in the PVH. So these are fibers coming from these neurons. And then we implant fiber uh, tract uh, fibers to induce light to activate this fiber. And uh, this is the fiber tract shown here. And this is the video I want uh, to share with you once we use light to stimulate the fiber. See, now without light, the animal behave normally. Now with the light, you can appreciate the animal will approach the food within a few seconds. And the animal will engage in feeding behavior. Remember, this animal is well fed. They are not hungry. But once these fibers being activated, we will drive this animal um, to initiate this uh, voracious uh, feeding behavior. As long as uh, the light is on, the feeding behavior will go on. And when the light stops, the feeding behavior will stop. You can clearly see that. So this is a condition we provide mice with food. How about if we don't provide mice with food, what's gonna happen? So this video, the same mice, uh, same condition, uh, same stimulation, the only difference without food. You can clearly see that this mice engaging in extensive licking behavior. Uh, so licking behavior is something related to feeding behavior. So the bottom line is activation of this GABA neuron projection to PDH initiate this feeding behavior. Okay, now we know that we stimulated this GABA projection uh, from LH to PVH um, induced in, in, in voracious feeding behavior. What about the glutamate projection? So we did the same way we stimulate glutamogenic projection, which is excitatory. And this is the video I want to share with you. And uh, once the light is on, you can see the behavior. The mice engage in extensive self-grooming behavior. And as long as the light is on, these mice will engage in self-grooming behavior. And within five minutes, the mice spend most of the time um, in self-grooming behavior, suggesting that the glutamate release from LH to PVH induce this uh, distinct self-grooming behavior, which is totally different from feeding behavior. Once the light is off, the self-grooming behavior disappears. So self-grooming behavior is a very interesting phenomenon in rodents. Because uh, in rodents, it has been shown uh, is a typical rep repetitive uh, asocial behavior. And it can be used as a, a trade for autism uh, a spectrum and also with increased stress level. So people in the research field view self-grooming as a autism spectrum. So now we know that um, activation of GABA produce feeding, activation of glutamate produce self-grooming. So are there, do they have any interaction? So we perform this experiment. So we use water spray to induce self-grooming first. We know the mice, they don't like to be wet. Once they have water on their body, they will um, initiate self-grooming to uh, clean them. Uh, this is also associated with a higher level of stress. And under this condition, if we can increase the GABA input from LH to PVH, then we can see what's gonna happen. So let me share this video. So this mice um, with water spray, they engage in self-grooming. This is normal behavior, normal mouse behavior. And we can pay attention when the light is on or what's gonna happen. Okay, light is on now. Uh, the mice now automatically approach the food on the other side of the cage. And as long as the light is on, the animal will engage in feeding. And you want to pay attention when the light is off. Um, yeah, as long as the light is on, you will continue feeding. Um, remember now they are facing with high level stress because their body uh, is still wet. Okay, light is off. So the mice now all of a sudden remember their body is still wet, they go back and um, engaging in self-grooming now. So this suggests that there's intense interaction between uh, the feeding behavior and the self-grooming behavior. Once you activate self-feeding uh, behavior and this will override the self-grooming behavior. So this 
uh, we uh, shared with you the function of LH projection, LH to PVH projection. So now we want to um, know what is the downstream neuron that mediated PVH function. So one study we did is then we using similar approach, we express uh, channel adoption specifically in, LH, uh, in PVH neurons. And you can see, again, there's a lot of fibers in another brain structure called lateral septum. And this is structure, we are interested in this structure because this structure is well known to regulate fear and aggression related to emotional control. And it, because it's also is on previous unknown that this, this PVH is sent projection to lateral septum. So we became very interested in this projection. So we did the same thing. We express uh, channel adoption uh, specifically um, in the PVH. And this is the fibers coming from PVH. And we use a fiber to activate this, this uh, use a light to activate this fiber specifically from PVH. And you can see um, activation of light. We use different protocol of light with a, a low uh, in, uh, uh, intense light and high intense light. And we can see that they have different uh, role in inhibitory uh, inhibition food intake. If you fast the animal for 20 uh, hours, the animal will have higher level of hungry and the, this light inhibition is reduced compared to 12 hour fasting. Um, so there is definitely a interaction between the level of hunger and the effect of activation of the terminal to inhibit um, food intake. And interestingly, if we stimulate this terminal uh, in a fasting animal, we turn light on, light off, light on, light off in an alternative, in an alternative fashion. And you can see whenever the light is on, the mouse feeding behavior is reduced. And it's clearly shown in this video. In the video, as you can see, because the mice um, is overnight fasted, they're very hungry. Once they present with the food, they will engage in feeding behavior because they are so hungry. But once the light is on to activate this fiber, the animals stop eating right away and sort of engaging in self-grooming behavior. Yeah, when light is off, they switch the feeding behavior right away. So this light induced activation of PVH to lateral septum activation uh, cause inhibition of feeding um, is very fast and is a very, uh, is a reversal. So when you activate these fibers, uh, they don't eat. What's their behavior? As I just show, uh, if we don't provide the food and the animal will engage in intense self-grooming behavior. As clearly shown here, once the light is on, the animal show uh, self-grooming behavior. Also shown here, um, within two minutes, they spend so much time in self-grooming and the controls, none of them show any self-grooming. Again, this self-grooming is a very compulsive and is a behavior manifestation of autism. So this is, we use a low degree of light stimulation. How about um, high degree of light stimulation? And you can see we use a higher level strength of uh, photo activation. You can see the mice engaging in these bizarre uh, jumping behavior. And the mice normally wouldn't do that. And once the light is off, the jumping behavior will disappear. So we have other data to show that this jumping behavior is associated with the fear. Um, and this data suggests that the activation of a PVH to lateral septum circuit can um, induce two distinct behavior, one self-grooming and one jumping, and associated with the fear and the stress. And we know that fear and stress, feeling that we don't like, and we know that it's associated with negative valence and aversion. So also we want to see whether the mice like to be stimulated or not. So we use this paradigm. So we put mice in this uh, active uh, 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 moving arena and we um, pair one side with the light and the other side with light off because the animal can freely moving with this arena and um, they will tell you uh, whether the mice like to be stimulated or not. If they like, they will spend more time in the onside. If they don't like, they will spend more side in the offside. So this is the control mice. Um, if you look at 
the um, stimulated mice, you can see the mice spend most of the time in the offside. So just in these mice, they don't like the, uh, the, the, the fiber uh, to be stimulated. And this is the quantification. Uh, control mice spend equal time between two uh, sides. And these light activated mice, they spend most of the time in the offside. And, uh, and this is a uh, light intensity um, dependent. With more um, intensive uh, photo activation, uh, the mice spend more time on the offside, uh, suggesting that the stimulation of a PVH to lateral septum cause a scalable effect on aversion because they don't like it. And we also want to see whether there's a competition of this aversion with the feeding behavior. So in this experiment, we um, pair one side similarly uh, with the light on, pair the other side with the light off. And we then uh, put the food on the one corner of the on site. So the mice now have, they have to make a choice uh, because they're, they, the mice are fasted, they are hungry, they have to make a choice to go to this side, which they don't like uh, to eat food, or they'd rather stay on the off side, but if, um, with hunger. Uh, so this is the control mice. Of course, they spend much of, most of the time in the food zone because they're hungry, they, they want to eat food. But in low strength stimulation, you can see the mice eat a little bit, uh, but the movement is much less than the control mice. And high strength stimulation, you can see barely any, any movement uh, within the food zone. So this is the quantification that with low and high uh, strength stimulation, uh, they have reduced the feeding behavior. And high strength stimulation, they have zero uh, feeding behavior. This suggests like there's intensive, intense interaction between hunger and aversion um, modulated by uh, the, uh, this uh, PVH, the lateral septum circuit. So, um, so I just want to sum, uh, 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 sum up the, uh, the overall uh, neural pathway that we identified. So we identified a neural circuitry from LH to PVH and regulated feeding and grooming and also PVH to lateral septum also regular feeding and self-grooming. And once this circuit uh, activity is reduced, we'll in increase feeding. And once it activated, we'll induce aversion, compulsive behavior, stress, anxiety, and fear. And uh, we are still um, pursuing study to investigate whether this neural circuit is involved in um, anorexia or compulsive feeding behavior in, uh, related to human uh, behavior. And um, um, it may also involved in uh, the gene regulated in this uh, uh, TBRS uh, syndrome, uh, which will require further study. The bottom line of this presentation is we identified a shared neural circuit uh, that um, projection from LH to PVH to lateral septum uh, that can co-regulate a feeding and em feeding behavior and emotional states. And, and uh, now we can see that maybe this circuit is also being involved in this little guy to make a decision whether they're gonna eat this delicious cheese or not. Finally, I would thank uh, my uh, lab. So this project is being led by uh, two talent lab members, um, Neander Majari and Don Shu in the lab. And uh, we receive a lot of support from community, including Baylor College of Medicine, and also my uh, grant support. Uh, this is a beautiful Texas Medical Center. And uh, finally, I would like to thank everybody for your time and take any questions you might have. Thank you so much.